Hello, it's Sarah. Long time no see, guys. Um, have a lot of stuff to get to here. Uh, let me start with this. Ouch, Kiwi. I made a video for innovations in creative innovations in painting. Debbie Cole asked me to um, create a project, one of my mandalas. And it's so I, she wanted it to be, the theme was fall. So I came up with this one. I really loved it. And I should, I should redo this because it's really pretty. I really like it. The only thing is design-wise that drove me crazy was I had these little berry wreaths. So it's flower wreath, acorn wreath, leaf, pumpkin wreath. So I want to flip these two. And I probably won't put the little wheat in the middle. Like certain things just after I've done it, like I think, yeah, I would change that now, you know. And it's because when I design, I go right to the, to the wood. I haven't been creating on paper first. Um, that being said, I will probably start to do that more often because, <clears throat> so I wasn't thrilled with this to teach it as a class. So I set it aside and I started working on a different one. And I made, so I made a littler one because I ordered some 8-inch rounds thinking that people would be able to recreate this on paper. And in the 8-inch size, it's just a more workable surface. You can use any piece of um, mixed media paper. So that's what I did. So I actually did it on paper. This is just regular mixed media paper. And I taught the class on paper. And we did it as a pen and ink, so a, a wash and ink project. So this is what it looks like finished. And then you can just stick it in your art journal or whatever. But mainly the idea was to get them, uh, to get you guys to see how soothing and wonderful mandalas are. Because I'm still playing with them. I'm still going crazy with mandalas. Um... I absolutely love the wood burning and paint combination. I think that is where the innovation comes in with the painting for me anyway. Um, because I love the floating technique. is such a great way to add color to your pieces. And you've seen me use that a ton. So then I created this one this weekend. Wait, today's Tuesday already. But yeah, this, after I taught the class, um... Halloween was just in my head and I was like I had these all these ideas so this is the first one I did I'm gonna try and find it because there, there's Easter eggs there's one smiley face pumpkin and the rest are kind of you know grouchy um, so I'll come in and show you this this is a 12 inch mandala I'm pretty sure yeah and um, it's a 12 spoke mandala as well so you start in the middle and you work your way out and I'll show you I just love it so it started with the um, spider web and then I have spiders then I put candy corns in here because I like to break it up and I like that I think it turned out pretty good um, you know it's its own thing then I this little section here from where the bats butt is to the top of the houses so it would be like right there that little section was the house with the tree but then when I put the bats in there was the space between their wings for me to put a little cross and then the house became a church so the designing is so fun for me and then look here's my happy pumpkin and my mad pumpkins they're so cute um, and then I decided at first I had drawn it with another pumpkin in the center like kind of squeezed in but I erased all those and I decided to put gourds and they're kind of um, all different because gourds are all different shapes and I put that little squiggly on top and we're back to my cute little happy one and then I put trick-or-treat on the top part um, and I just freehanded it um, and remember, when I'm creating this, it's all in a grid. So everything fits in its own space. And then I did add some yellow. But I think what happens with the designing part of it, 
I just want to add the colors that I've used. So for this one I used, well this is purple. The background of the night sky is purple. Soft black, a couple colors of orange and yellow. So white, orange, yellow, soft black, and that's basically it. Um, I did a little uh, brown for the tree and the um, stems. You know, but for the most part, it's staying um, very few colors, just using the floating technique. And I just love it. So, I, of course, I had to recreate it in a teachable size. So I did an 8-inch one. And I just did the, the same thing. Now, I did, there's a mistake on here that no one would know if I didn't tell you. But this was... Um, I call it a, a Harlequin pattern. It started out as a Harlequin pattern, but I had to change it because when I started burning, let's see if I can find the exact one. I think it was this one. I put my burner down and I burned this line and I didn't want a line here. So every like few of those, I ended up putting a line. You know, See how I did that? Just like every other one, I put a line in the middle of it you can't tell when you know you're just looking at it as a as a piece it looks fine but the web was supposed to stop here and then the spider legs were going to be you know what i mean and then this would have just been a harlequin so anyway that's the only thing and then thinking about it i would also i'm not sure i do like because this did have lines around it it was its own section that I do put a line there, but then it leaves these little empty spaces here of just not colored wood. But I just love this little, um, the church scene was so cool. So this one I just kind of took out the pumpkins, really. That's the main thing I did to change it up. And I still use the orange and yellow, but I put the orange and yellow up here with the trick or treat. And then I put a little candy corn in between because I had room so trick or treat with the candy corn I love it so anywho um, that is that so then I want to share so today I'm gonna wood burn I'm gonna do a tutorial on wood burning and I'm gonna do this guy who is a, a, a little moon it's a simple wood burning project but then I'm gonna paint it and I could get, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I want to think about it. But this was a used piece of wood where I had traced there's a B under here. And I, did, I just didn't think I could use it as um, a mandala necessarily, but I probably could. And Anyway, I'll do that in a minute. Then I want to talk to you about the Glowforge. We got a Glowforge, which is a laser cutter. It's kind of like a silhouette or a... Um, What's the other one? Where you can um, cut paper and all that stuff. Uh, the Cricut. I had the Cricut Explorer, I think it was called. I gave it to Monica. But um, Joe is playing with it. This is the lid for the, I mean, the little handle in it. Uh, Maya, Maya broke it by accident. Anywho, this is, there's going to be a webinar today on how to use your Glowforge as a business. So what it is, is it's a laser cutter of wood. And this is the, um, the practice wood. Like Joe made this for his, um, for the Federal Aviation Administration. And he's just learning it. And we're just starting to learn. But you can program it to cut wood. But this is kind of a take on this little phone stand that I have. So maybe eventually. And see, this is not my cup of tea, guys. Like, I'm truly not into the whole program that's why the Cricut didn't I could I didn't want to do the Cricut because I played with it a little bit and I made a few things but then it's not the same as the hands-on stuff that I create in here um, but what I want to do with it is just create blanks that I can either burn or paint on you know and then um, possibly create my own shapes to, create, to make my own projects, if, I, if that's where I'm going. But look what it can do. This is the intricacy that it can do. He made me this mandala um, 
look at that you can see right through it that's how intricate it is and these are um, patterns that they offer for free there's a, like a, a, a forum and a, um, a community and all that stuff and like I said there's gonna be a uh, webinar today that we're both gonna watch that Glowforge puts out because they want it to be as simple as that so um, anywho this was the first lesson see made on a Glowforge um, this one Matthew wrote these words may the forge be with you and it etches it right into the wood so um, this is the first lesson where it just shows you that it can like outline these little circles cut the circles and it's just a little measuring thing um, and then this one was again this time it used it's a font that we picked um, but like it can basically make anything uh, so now he's working oh look this is Matt this is more I think this setting was probably more for etching on glass um, but it did etch it into the wood because it's cut with a laser so this is all just figuring out what it can do I mean it's some of them if they're if the program is already set this is what it makes you know um, so he's trying to he just took this little um this was just a already made pattern my serenity crafts and he put my name so I like the fonts and all that stuff but we're playing I want him to make it my own that you know uh, kind of my own drawing if if you will um, but he's just playing with the program so he's tweaking the Sun like changing the face and all that stuff and like I told him to take out every other uh, line for the rainbow and like it would just clean it up you know because if this was on anyway he's figuring all that stuff out right now oh I wanted to show you this I did this little box and this all started when with, because my brother passed and I have his ashes and I wanted to make the kids um, little boxes to keep their ashes in this is just from Hobby Lobby um, I literally bought it and uh, did it that very same day so this is my wood burning and painting technique so um, I've been busy I just don't film but today I do think I'm going to do a quick wood burning um, video because this shouldn't take long it's just very straight um, straight lines and I'll share what I've learned about uh, wood burning so far alright that was quick I guess um, sorry I was talking really fast um, but I want to get to burning so I just wanted to share please um, like subscribe do all that good stuff but also in the comments let me know what you've heard or what you know about the Glowforge what you'd like to see if we if we did become a business um, and started putting things in, in my Etsy store uh, what what you'd like to see maybe combining what I do and the Glowforge because um, you know a lot of people are making really cool things with the Glowforge but I kind of don't want to lose the handmade aspect of my Serenity Craft. So, uh, love you guys. Thanks for watching.